Hello everybody, it's Henry Baggins, and today I'm going to be talking about Weird Dreams. Developed by Rainbird Software, Weird Dreams feels like a weird dream. There are so many random places you could end up in, like a gigantic cotton candy machine, an empty museum with piano as a floor, a room with mirror portals, etc. There are plenty of enemies in the game, all with the worst hitboxes in video game history. You have flowers, a lawnmower, a soccer ball, a girl, a chicken heart with teeth, I don't know, a cyclops dude with literally, literally the worst the worst hitbox ever, and with a head and only two feet, you have a fish, and an awesome looking piano dude. The list goes on and on. The story is not simple at all, and literally nowhere in the game does it say anything about the story. It's only on the back of the game box. But anyway, you're a dude named Steve, and you are in love with your co-worker, Emily, the widest names possible. Unfortunately for Steve, Emily is actually a daemon, not a demon, a daemon, named Zelaripus, that was banished to Earth, stripped of her powers, and cursed into a female body. Emily is very bored and obviously doesn't know about the law, so she decides to mess with Steve. She gives him pills to help with his recent flu and he starts having wacky, lucid, and real dreams. Steve's health dramatically declines after this and is put on anesthetics. He slips into another dream, which is the one that we are seeing right now. So I hate to say it, but this game genuinely sucks. The game creators obviously didn't know how to make a game because the amount of secrets and broken enemies there are, there are is completely unorthodox. Our friend Steve has no health, but only 5 lives. Steve immediately dies if he comes into contact with an enemy. This will happen a lot because you practically don't know what is an enemy and what isn't. There is a bar at the top stating how many lives you have, what items you have, a place for your soccer ball, your heart rate which is pretty much useless, and your time and how far you are in the game, otherwise known as score for some reason. There are six different quote-unquote worlds, all with unique enemies, and the point of the game is to wake up. How you get there is pretty questionable, as you can see here, because you're fighting a bee with a freaking electric eel. This game requires the highest level of attention and dexterity, especially this part. This part is like the trolliest part in the game. You're going to die probably over a hundred times here. The thing about it is this guy behind the box, he he knows where you are. So the piano keys that lift up, you have several ones that are in the behind you. And then there's going to be the one that just messes you up because it's right in front of you or on you. Sometimes he doesn't even give you a chance. You just uh, you respawn and then there's a piano piece that just lifts up and then you die. It's it's incredibly dumb and ha it's. It's so stupid how he can tell where you are. It's just completely broken and unfair. And it's almost impossible to get past this without just losing the game completely. The hitboxes are incredibly cumbersome, as picking up an item has to be pixel perfect along with hitting an enemy. The game has some of the stupidest secrets that you have to find out to get you through the game, or else you're just, you lost forever. Like, how is anyone supposed to know that I'm supposed to use a soccer ball to get through this desert? It's, it's incredibly stupid. And also, that was kind of unexpected, but yeah, it's just, everything, there's so many secrets, like, there was, there's a portal in a bush, like, how is anyone supposed to know that, anything? At the start of the game, you are in a cotton candy dispenser, and to make it easy on yourself, you want to probably con collect all of these little pink flying things as much as you can so that you can distract the bee that's about to come for you when you get to the carnival land, because it will pick 
they will pick up these things that you drop on the ground and eat them. This is also this is also crucial because it will drop its little item when it does this, and you need that item to get back. How is anyone supposed to know that? I don't know. How does anyone supposed to know that you're supposed to drop these little pink things so that the bee picks them up? I don't know. How is anyone supposed to know that this little fly swatter thing that he's about to pick up, which he can't because the hitboxes are so terrible, how is anyone supposed to know that you're supposed to pick that weird decoration thing on the ground up? This is... It's just so stupid. How is anyone supposed to know that the bee is going to come straight for you right after this? You're going to die so many times in this game. It's unreal. Once you're done with the bee, you get into this room of mirrors, and you should probably take the one on your right. You'll end up in a garden, pick up those sticks, and kill those flowers. Again, how is anyone supposed to know that those flowers are going to kill you? This, it's dumb. If you take too long, a lawnmower is going to come and kill you, by the way. After this, you play catch with a little girl and a soccer ball that has a face and will eat you if you don't catch it. Also, if you don't catch the ball and let it roll by you, the girl has a knife behind your back and she will kill you. So pretty much everything in this game kills you. Anyway, once you throw the ball enough times, it's going to come back at her and eat her. Then the soccer ball will be your little companion coming into that slot next to heart rate. This is just to show you how you're supposed to do it. The ball comes right at her and then goes into that little slot, which we'll have to use later to get through a desert, I don't know. And then after this, you have to go into a portal in that hedge statue thing. How is anyone supposed to know this? Again, how is anyone supposed to know that you're supposed to go there? It's dumb. After this, you end up in Piano Land. Pass the pianos, pass the dancing girl, pass another set of pianos, and collect the eel to kill the bee. The bee here has a massive amount of health, and it's crazy. It would probably take you five minutes to kill it because of how much health it has. The one good thing, though, is that it actually has a hitbox, a correct hitbox. But then there's a cheese here because you can... Re you can repeatedly hit it because the bee gets stuck on the wall, but yeah Then you end up in a desert collect one of the fish in the sky and you're good to go You have your new weapon attack some dudes with long necks and just make your way through the desert Once you're at this area avoid this thing portal on the ground and break this statue so that you can get another item that is crucial for you to get out and then jump back in the little portal thing on the ground, and you'll end up back in the mirror place. Once here, you'll end up in apartment building with bats flying around. Avoid the bats and collect a sign that says press, and then get out of there. Once you get to the grandfather clock, open it up and collect your last little item that you need. And then exit out of the left door, because if you exit out of the right, you're going to get eaten. Kill the brains flying around this little eyeball thing, and then you're good to go. They'll go into your eye, you'll wake up, and everything's gonna be okay. Now you'll end up back to the real world, and it's a happy ending after all. Oh, wait a second. So that's Weird Dreams. This game is, is um, just a terrible game. The soundtrack is okay, the story is great, but... Again, you can have a good soundtrack, you can have a good story. The gameplay is the saving point of the game. You can't have a game if it doesn't have good gameplay. And this is an abomination of a gameplay. It's just terrible. The hitboxes are astronomically bad. You can't pick up anything. The game is incredibly hard. You're going to die so many times. You have five lives. You, de you never know what's coming, so you're going to have to practice a lot. It's just a terrible excuse of a game. And the artwork is okay. I'll give it that. But I guess I'm, I'll just probably... I'm going to have to give it a... I'll give it a 2.5 out of 10. The 2.5 is only for the artwork, the music, the story. But you can't have a game without a good gameplay. 
Anyway, that's it for this video. Like and subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Bye.